Systems Physics is a new approach to the fundamental laws of nature. This physics course for future engineers and scientists is based on system dynamic modeling. The core of each model consists of a balance equation for one or several substance-like quantities. Added to this are constitutive relations such as the law of capacitance and the law of resistance. An energy balance can be formulated as an additional option. Systems physics can be used in all areas of engineering, such as hydrodynamics, electrodynamics, translational mechanics, rotational mechanics, and thermodynamics. The fundamental principles of a dynamic system can best be explained using this example from hydraulics. Two connected plastic bottles form an easily understandable dynamic system. At the beginning, one of the bottles is filled with water and compressed air. Now for the system dynamic model. The model for the two plastic bottles consists of the balance equation, the laws of capacitance, and the laws of resistance. An energy balance can be added as an additional option. The volume balance is formulated graphically using reservoirs and pipes. The law of capacitance and the law of resistance are added. The energy balance is formulated with the energy flow. In modeling, students must formulate the laws correctly, but do not have to formulate any differential equations. Now for the results of the simulation. The black line and the red line show how volume changes over time. The green line and the blue line show how pressure changes over time. It is the pressure difference and not the volume difference that gradually approaches zero. In classical physics, there are seven other substance-like quantities besides energy. Momentum, angular momentum, or entropy can be seen as quantities just as mass or volume can. Each substance-like quantity is associated with a certain potential. Pressure is the hydraulic potential, velocity or angular velocity is the mechanical potential, and temperature is a the thermal potential. These potentials also determine how much energy is transported with a certain quantity. This picture of a waterfall illustrates the energy carrier concept of the Karlsruhe physics course. A mass flow can be charged with energy. The gravitational potential determines how strongly the mass flow is charged with energy. If the mass falls from a height, part of the energy flow is released as power. In systems physics, we differentiate between energy flow, which is potential times mass flow rate, and power, which is the potential difference times the mass flow rate. This principle can be applied to the other six quantities as well. Each potential also indicates the amount of energy with which the related flow is charged. When the flow of a substance-like quantity falls through a potential difference, power is released. Mechanics includes more than just the movement of material points in a void. Mechanics is also concerned with deformable elements, as shown in this example of a crash buffer. This is a model of an overrunning collision between two freight wagons. It includes a momentum balance, kinematics, the flow of momentum, and the energy balance. The energy balance has no retroactive effects on the rest of the dynamic system. Now for the equations. The balance of momentum is formulated graphically using reservoirs and pipes. The law of capacitance is easy to formulate. The momentum flow passing through the buffers depends on the displacement as well as the velocity of the two wagons. The sliding friction only changes according to the sign of the velocity. The energy flow is velocity times momentum flow, just like in hydraulics. This diagram shows the time evolution of velocity for the two wagons. The advancing wagon is shown in black and the initially stationary wagon is shown in red. The level of brake activation is different in each wagon. In the advancing wagon the brakes are lightly activated and in the stationary wagon the brakes are fully activated. Since the advancing wagon has a greater mass than the stationary wagon 
there are multiple collisions. Momentum flows from one wagon into the other through the buffers. Such momentum flows can be displayed visually. This diagram shows the momentum flows in a steel plate under tensional stress. At the top, you can see momentum flow X flowing in negative direction. In the narrowed section, the diverted momentum flow X causes eddy currents of the Y component. If the momentum flow is forced to go a longer way, as shown here, the eddy currents become stronger. Now, what are forces? The connection between momentum flow and force can be explained using a game of tug-of-war as an example. In this game, a circuit of strong momentum flow is created. In a free body diagram for a player at one end of the rope, the strength of a momentum inflow is indicated with a positive force. The outflow of momentum is a negative force. The same can be done, for example, with a section of the rope. Momentum inflow equals positive force. Momentum outflow equals negative force. Forces are therefore momentum flows into or out of a system. Now let's look at the concept of liquid representation. A liquid representation shows the fundamental relations in mechanics. In this picture, momentum is shown as a fluid, a body is shown as a reservoir, and the body's mass corresponds to the cross-sectional area of the reservoir. The velocity is shown as a filling level and the acceleration appears as velocity. The momentum is area times height or mass times velocity. The momentum balance is recognizable as a mass balance. Energy flow and power are directly recognizable, like in a waterfall. The kinetic energy equals the stored momentum, which is mass times velocity, multiplied by the mean pumping height. This energy corresponds to the work that must be done to transfer the momentum from the earth into the body. Let us now apply the liquid representation to an inelastic collision. The reservoir on the left represents a body moving in a positive direction. The reservoir on the right represents a body moving in a negative direction. One body has a momentum surplus, while the other has a momentum deficit. In the case of an inelastic collision, momentum is transferred until the velocities are the same. The velocity can then be calculated as in the case of communicating vessels. The released energy equals momentum times the mean height of fall. An elastic collision is like an inelastic collision doubled. First, as in the case of an inelastic collision, momentum flows down and releases energy. Then the same amount of momentum is pumped upward and the energy released and the energy absorbed are equal. As a result, the momentum that flows down and the momentum that is pumped up are equal. In this way, the terminal velocity of the two bodies can be calculated. A liquid representation can also be used in relativity theory. In the top picture, we see Newton pumping momentum into a body. In principle, the velocity can increase indefinitely with the momentum. The energy needed per momentum increases with the velocity. This is why the momentum that Newton can convey into the body per stroke gradually decreases. In the second picture, Einstein explains to Newton what happens when the velocity approaches the speed of light. Conveyance of momentum is also conveyance of energy, so the mass increases, as does the cross-sectional area of the vessel. Thus, the momentum pumped into the vessel leads to hardly any increase in velocity. I will explain this principle in another diagram. The conveyance of momentum into a body also means the conveyance of energy. This energy increases the body's mass. Part of the momentum flowing in must therefore first fill up the additional mass 
and the rest of the momentum increases the velocity. The more Einstein pumps, the more momentum has to be used to fill the increasing mass, and the less momentum is left to increase the velocity. This can be expressed as a formula. An integration provides a relativistic mass-momentum relation. These relations can also be modeled in system dynamics. This is a model of an accelerated body. The force changes sinusoidally with time. The model includes a momentum balance, geometry, and an energy balance. The relation between velocity and momentum is given by the law of capacitance. Now, what changes if we create a relativistic model? The energy balance becomes a mass balance when the energy flow is divided by the speed of light squared. The law of capacitance stays the same, but the relativistic mass must be entered instead of the rest mass. In relativistic mechanics, the energy balance becomes a mass balance, and thus part of the dynamic system. Now let's move on to rotational mechanics. Two flywheels rotating in opposite directions are braked. Angular momentum flows from one wheel into the other. At the same time, energy flow passes from each of the two wheels into their brakes. The strength of the energy flow equals angular momentum flow times angular velocity. If the angular velocity is less than zero, the energy flows against the angular momentum. Now I will explain the falling cat problem. Why do cats always land on their feet? A falling cat is like two ice skaters changing their mass moment of inertia in opposite directions. The two phases of the fall can be shown in a liquid representation. First, the mass moment of inertia is high at the rear and low at the front. The cat pumps angular momentum from the rear to the front and back again. The area under the curve corresponds to the rotational angle. This means that the cat turns further at the front than at the rear. In the second phase, the mass moments of inertia are the other way around, and the cat conveys angular momentum to the rear and then back to the front. The cat undergoes a net rotation. The system dynamic model again includes a rotational balance, geometry, and an energy balance. In this simple model, the cat's rotation is very strong. Here you can see the angles, over time, of the back and front of the cat. In the middle of the activity, the cat is twisted by 2 pi, a full rotation. A cat would hardly survive this in reality. The energy balance is interesting as well. The rotational energy is not identical to the work done by the torque. The red curve shows the rotational energy of the front of the cat, and the blue curve shows the work done by the torque at the front of the cat. They are not equal because the cat does not act like two rigid bodies. Angular momentum can be stored, but it can also flow through structural elements. Angular momentum flowing in its own reference direction puts the structural element under torsional stress. The angular momentum is constrained by lateral momentum flows. The momentum flow of component y going around the element defines the angular momentum flow of component y going through the element. I will show this in a cross section. Due to the torsion, momentum flows in a circuit through the element. The strength of this momentum flow determines the strength of the angular momentum flow. If part of the element is removed, the momentum flow is forced to turn around. Now it flows around a smaller area and therefore the angular momentum flow is much weaker. Another concept used in systems physics is a source and sink concept. Gravitation acts as a source of momentum, so momentum z constantly flows into this block. 
This momentum must be transferred to the earth via the beam to keep the block from falling. The lateral momentum flow generates sources and sinks of angular momentum y. Now the sources have to feed the sinks. This is why angular momentum flows at a right angle to its reference direction. This angular momentum flow causes bending. Bending can be explained in two different ways. The momentum flow from the thumbs to the forefingers induces an eddy current of the other component, as a result of the symmetry of the stress tensor. The lateral momentum flow creates sources and sinks for the angular momentum. Since the sources feed the sinks, an angular momentum flows at a right angle to the reference direction. This angular momentum flow is constrained by a further momentum flow. Now let's move on to thermodynamics. In a nuclear reactor, entropy is generated. This entropy transmits part of its energy to the turbine. The rest of the energy is released into the surroundings together with the entropy. This picture can help explain thermodynamic processes. A heat engine conducts entropy from a high temperature to a low temperature and detracts energy from the entropy current in the form of power. A heat pump conveys entropy from the cold area to the warmer area using a certain amount of power. These images also help explain how a refrigerator works. A refrigerator consists of an insulated chamber and a heat pump. The heat pump conveys entropy out of the refrigerator and uses a certain amount of power to do this. On the other side, entropy constantly flows into the refrigerator through the insulation. The energy flow is thus maintained and the entropy increases to a maximum. Therefore, in heat conduction, entropy increases to a maximum and energy is maintained. In the case of an ideal heat pump, entropy is maintained and energy has to be supplied. In thermodynamics, there are no simple capacities. To illustrate the thermal behavior of substances, I have introduced the Carnoter. This machine consists of a cylinder divided into two chambers by a piston. One chamber contains the substance that is to be examined and the other contains an ideal fluid. The Carnoter can be operated in different ways. It can be connected to a heat pump or a hydraulic pump. It can be insulated thermally or hydraulically. It can also be thermally short-circuited with a heating bath or hydraulically short-circuited with a balancing reservoir. The fundamental processes of classical thermodynamics can be modeled and simulated with this machine. The system dynamic model includes the volume balance and the entropy balance, the potentials, the flows, and again the energy balance. The entropy balance and the volume balance are represented by reservoirs and pipes. The laws of capacitance for an ideal gas are somewhat more complicated. The flow laws for the short circuits, isobaric and isothermal, are formulated using conductances. The energy balance is linked to the rest of the model by the energy flow. Systems physics is based on the Karlsruhe physics course. It has been developed in Winterthur over the past 25 years and uses system dynamics as a paradigm. This course has great potential, but it remains to be seen whether it will gain recognition. I see myself as someone trying to help this approach make a breakthrough, a bit like the legendary Swiss hero Arnold Winkelried. However, many of my colleagues think my situation is more like that of Don Quixote. <laughs>